Jesus. Praise the God the Father. Yes. God the Son and God the Spirit. Amen. Praise the one who came and rescued us. Praise the one who came and redeemed us. Yes. Praise the one who offers eternal life through his blood. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Throughout scripture, Jesus Christ is identified as the eternal word of God. Yes. One who came and dwelt among us. Mm. Throughout scripture, Jesus is identified as the Messiah mm. who came and rescued us from the wrath of God. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise to the Alpha and Omega. Yes. Praise to the beginning and the end. King of kings. Lord of Lords. Amen. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As Christian scripture identifies Jesus, the eternal word of Allah, who took up human flesh and lived among us. He was the king of kings, but he became human, he became servant, so that we can rescue, it. we can save from the wrath of God. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to Jesus, yes. As in Christian scripture, Jesus Christ took up human flesh. When we look at the Islamic scripture, we see eternal word of Allah in Islamic scripture as well, which is identified as the book called Quran. Yeah. According to Islamic scripture, according to Islamic teaching, the eternal word of Allah took up book form and came to the reveal the will of Allah to mankind. Mm. Today, we want to understand actually what does Islam teaches about his eternal word. What does Islam teaches about Quran to be word of God? And we will be looking at that. That's right. Because um, as my sister pointed out, as Christians, when we read John 1.1, 1, 1, we believe scripture explicitly states that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yes. And then the Bible goes on to say that, that, that the word came down. And what we're trying to say is that we understand we ask Christian concepts of the Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we believe the word Jesus Christ incarnated is the word that came down and dwelt with humanity. What Muslims will tell us is that the word of Allah cannot become a man. The word Allah cannot come as a man, but yet they say the word of Allah is part of Allah. So we want to look at that in detail and understand where they draw their concepts from and their understandings. I guess Christians and Muslims would agree, in a sense, God cannot do everything. Yes. Christian scripture teaches God cannot do the things which goes against his nature. Yeah. For example, God cannot lie. God cannot be um, just get lost. <laughs> yes. I forgot the God, yeah. for that. God can't create another God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Muslims would agree with that. God yes. cannot do um, the, the, the logically things which impossible. Goes, uh, yeah. against his nature. Yeah. Yeah. But Christian scripture teaches because the nature of God, mm. essence of God is love, community and relationship. Yes. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with, with his grace, eternal, per, eternal, um, eternal person. Oh. Eternal person. His Sorry. grace? That's okay. So Christian scripture yeah. teaches there is nothing wrong yeah. that the second person of Godhead yeah. took up human flesh, yeah. Yeah. came and dwelt among Absolutely. us. Yeah. The eternal word of God came and incarnated. That doesn't go against the nature of God. Absolutely not. But according to Muslims, that would go against his nature. Well, what it shows to me is that you have this so-called all-powerful God who can do all things but yet he doesn't have the ability to um, to take on another nature to uh, another uh, another nature to himself he cannot take on human form and what we're saying is that as Christians we do believe that God is all-powerful and what the Bible says in Philippians 2 is, um, is that he took on upon him 
um, a, he became a servant. And so what I'm saying is that we believe there's a God who's omnipotent, who's all-powerful, who, who can take on another nature, whereas Muslims, God is deficient. He doesn't have the power to create another nature to add on to his own. So if, yeah. if Allah cannot become a human, yeah. but let's say what are the things word of Allah can do, okay. yet Allah cannot do. Yeah. So word of Allah, eternal word of Allah, mm. appears as a book today. Okay. Muslims all over the world are reciting the eternal word of Allah. Yeah. Allah cannot become a book, yeah. but his eternal word, which is part of Allah, yeah. and it is not created, turns up book in 2018. Actually, it appears from 7th century <laughs> to 8th century. Yeah. Yeah. As the eternal word of Allah becomes a book, yeah. it doesn't only stop that, mm. eternal word of Allah also becomes powerful, mm. all-knowing and all-powerful mm. to intercede for those Muslims mm. who recite the right recitation of the Quran. That's right, that's right. And let's, yeah, let's read what Sahil uh, Muslim says about this. So it says here, in Sahil Muslim 9, 991, um, it says, Abu Umama reported, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, read the Quran, for it will come as an intercessor for its reciters on the day of resurrection. And is, shall I read the other, other? Again, Sahih Muslim says in um, the, the following verse, and I was been some reported, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, the Quran and his people who applied it will be brought, brought on the day of resurrection, preceded with um, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imram, arguing on behalf of those who applied them. Bird of Allah is supposed to be the part of Allah. Yes. But in somehow, miracle is going to take place. Yes. And on the day of resurrection, Word of Allah is going to separate itself from the Allah mm. and going to intercede for people who recite the right recitation of the Quran. We know, according to Islamic tradition, that the Quran has been revealed in lots of different ways. In lots of different recitations, the right one is going to intercede to Allah on mm. behalf of Muslims. Mm. So in somehow, even though Muslims claim mm. that Quran is uncreated, mm. Quran is going to separate itself from its origin, from Allah and going to intercede for Allah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, okay. Qualities, attributes for you to intercede for someone or for something is very, very powerful. You must be all-knowing to intercede. You must be all-powerful and you must be all-present to be interesting. You need to know who are the people in this world reciting the right recitation. That is the attributes of Allah, and in Christianity, that's the attributes of God. But in somehow, in somehow, eternal word of Allah is going to take the attributes of Allah to Himself and going to deal with Allah to behalf of people. And until people are forgiven. Well, that's interesting because if Allah's word is Allah and cannot be separated from him, then you have Allah, Allah's words, speaking to Allah's word because he will be given intercessions for the people, which logically, is a logical incoherence because how can you have a being who cannot be um, distinct or separate and have his word separate from him, talking to him, who's speaking, is it Allah's word? Or is it Allah's word? I mean, it's just, it's just a mumble jumbo confusing. And so, Muslims really need to explain this to us. Why is it that Allah cannot be distinct 
from his word, but yet we hear, we, as we read the text, that his word is going to make, make it intercessions for unbelievers and his word will be directly talking to Allah. There are basic questions to ask. Why would Allah suddenly on the day of resurrection need help from outside someone to come and appear yeah. to intercede for Muslims? What happened to the knowledge of Allah? Why would Allah need someone to argue with Allah yeah. until Muslims are forgiven? Those are questions that we will be asking Muslims. Yes. So, word of Allah, eternal word of Allah, not only becomes a book, also the eternal word of Allah comes and intercedes for billions of Muslims on the day of resurrection. Re read that bit until he's forgiven. Yeah. That's interesting. So, narrated, um, narrated Abu Hurara. But the Prophet said, Indeed, there is a surah in the Quran of 30 ayat which intercedes for a man until he is forgiven. It is Surah Tabarak Aladi Biyadi Mulk. And this is Al Tamidi uh, 542, 2891. And so here, it seems that this ayat is discussing in Hadith. Oh, hadith, sorry, it's hadith, it's, no, no, the, um, the, 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 the ayat that's going to be coming. No, like one of the surah. Is sorry, the surah. So the surah is going to be basically um, dialoguing and arguing with Allah until they're forgiven. So it's like he's not going to accept Allah's word, but he's going to keep, keep arguing until they're forgiven. And so, you know, it just throws up questions. It's like, you know, if... Allah has the final say and Allah's word is absolute. Why is it that it needs a, a surah to convince him that, you know, that these people have to be forgiven? I mean, it's just very confusing. That's like identified in Islam as a shirk, yes. but I'm not going to go through that. You yes. can read the same story when the word of Allah is going to argue with Allah until people are being forgiven in, Sahih, in Abu Dawood. 1395. Yeah. So, without word of Allah, yeah. Allah is not capable to make a decision to make a decision to forgive people or not. On the day of judgment, Allah is a kind of pregnant woman mood <laughs> in the morning. So, you know, pregnant woman is like one source of things. Yeah, yeah. Allah is in that mood. Suddenly, eternal word of Allah steps in. Eternal word of Allah steps in and then separates itself from Allah and then asks Allah to forgive Muslims. Yeah. There is lots of shirk going on yes. and for someone to convince creator of everything, we would question what kind of attributes must that person have. You must be very good debater to debate with Allah so Muslims should be forgiven. Yeah, and yeah. then change the mind of Allah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as the eternal word of Allah in Islam doesn't only become a book, also we saw according to Islamic traditions, eternal word of Allah is going to appear and intercede for mankind. And it is same Islamic tradition tells us eternal word of Allah is also going to appear as a, as a uh, man. Pale man. Pale man. Yes. So what is Should the color of pale? The color of pale is very white. white. So, eternal word of Allah, <laughs> yeah. sorry, not going to appear as a dark person no. or not Middle Eastern, no. but it's going to appear as a white person, very, very white person. Very, very white man. <laughs> There is lots of racism going on with Allah, but that's again different topic. Absolutely. Christian scripture teaches eternal word of God united and took up human form so that mankind can be rescued. Amen. You Amen. can know who is holy God. That's right. But in Islam, on the day of judgment, eternal word of Allah is going to appear. 
as a pale man, what yeah. is the reason for that? Would you like to read the hadith? Let's read the hadith and see what it says here. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was narrated from Ibn Buraida that his father told that the messenger of Allah said the Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man and will say I am the one that kept you awake at night and made you thirsty during the day that's Subban Ibn Majah 533 3781 again it was narrated that Buraida said I heard the Prophet say the Quran will meet its companions on the day of resurrection when his grave is open for him in the form of a pale man it will say to him do you not do you recognize me he will say I do not recognize you it will say I am the companion your companion the Quran who kept you thirsty on hot days and kept you awake at night shall we to the end every merchant benefits from his business today you will benefit from your good deeds he will be given dominion in his right hand and eternity in his left and there will be placed on his head a crown of dignity and his parents will be clothed with priceless garments the like of which have never been seen in this world they will say why have we been clothed with this it will be said because your son used to recite Quran then it will be said to them recite and ascend in the degrees of paradise and we will continue to ascend as long as he recites either at a fast pace or a slow pace uh, okay so again hadith after hadith expresses that the eternal word of Allah is going to appear as a pale man which something Allah himself cannot do Allah doesn't even bother for the souls of human beings but eternal word of Allah on the day of resurrection is going to appear as a pale man white man very very white man to intercede for human beings intercede for Muslims those who did the right recitation that's right the question is this Allah is supposed to be all powerful and all knowing and he, his word is eternal part of him but on the day of judgment not wild people are living in this world wild people need to know him but on the day of judgment eternal word of Allah is going to appear as a pale man which Allah cannot do what does it tell us about Allah well what it tells us about Allah and again we've mentioned it so many times is that you have something which is greater than Allah because you have something which can do which is more powerful than Allah which can intercede which can come as a human being and so if Allah power is limited number one it shows that he's not all-powerful he's not God and number two it is this is why we speak about shirk or commonly known as idolatry because you find some being or something greater than God and so right in the text of the Quran and its hadiths you find shirk what's the punishment for shirk the punishment of shirk is hell fire it's an unforgivable sin but yet over and over again we find in the Quran and the, in the hadith that shirk is being committed and so we have to ask ourselves is it almost makes no sense why do we need an intercessor in in regards to in the Quran because as Christians we can affirm why we need intercessor our intercessor is Jesus Christ and he intercedes for us because we are all sinners because we broken God's holy commandments and because we need a savior and Jesus Christ died on the cross he received the due punishment that we deserve 
But from when you come to Islam, what you have is some um, the word of Allah just interceding just because someone is reciting their um, Quran at night. Right Which recitation. Rather in a recitation, right recitation. The, just because someone's reciting in, um, nothing nothing to do with sin, nothing to do with um, judgment um, with, uh, with with heaven, nothing. So we want to ask we want to ask Muslims. Is there any Muslims in the crowd? Hashim! Oh, you got Muslim here. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So. But two difficult questions. Simple one question. Yeah, simple questions. Sir? One simple question. Simple, simple, simple. simple. Okay. I'm a bit experienced. I'm, I'm no, no, we're, don't worry, simple. No, no, we're just, we're just asking, okay? You, as a Muslim, you believe that the word of Allah, okay? Do you believe, do you believe that the word of Allah is eternal and it's part of Allah? It depends. Are you referring to the word of Allah as a Jesus word of Allah? No, no, no. I'm saying, what do you believe as a Muslim? Do you believe that the word of Allah... Eternal word of Allah. There is two different schools of thought, whether it's created... No, I'm asking what you believe. Well, remember, I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to the crowd. I'm not talking to... I'm talking to you specifically. Do you believe that the word of Allah, okay, is the eternal word that's, um, that's part of Allah? Can it be separated from Allah? asking very difficult question because so you don't know I don't I have my own thinking so I, that's what I'm asking you I believe that <laughs> only internal is Allah Quran is revealed it came down from so it's not internal only Allah so the Quran is not eternal no it's been there was a moment a time where Quran came okay, it wasn't Allah, eternal it wasn't always there from the sir, beginning no. I'm going to make it much much simpler there is, is no there, evidence. I am going to make it much simpler. Yeah. Is the speech of Allah, is the word of Allah, part of Allah, or it is separated from Allah? Is your speech part of you or separated from you? It's part of you. The speech is part of Allah. Speech is part of Allah. Quran is the speech of Allah, therefore Quran is the part of Allah. Because Quran is the speech of Allah. Quran is the word of Allah. Therefore, Quran is part of Allah. If Quran is separated from Allah, Quran was in Allah's knowledge from the beginning. But there was a moment of time when Allah revealed Quran. So saying that Quran is in the early time of the Islamic history, if you make that claim, you will get killed. You know that. I don't care. I follow Quran. Allah says. Allah. I tell you, verse the Quran. Wa aminu bil hadith alladhi ja. Believe on the. Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you're heading. Can so, you so let me read the creed. Okay, what, what, what are you looking for that? I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you the creed. Um. Okay, so it says here. 30, um, is verse 33. Article 33. Article 33. The Quran is the word of Allah. It came from him as speech, without it being possible to say how. He sent it down on his messenger as revelation. The believers accept it as absolute truth. They are, they are certain that it is in truth, the word of Allah. It is not created as it is speech of, as is the speech of human beings. And anyone who hears it and claims that it is human speech has become an unbeliever. So the moment you state I'm that not, Quran is created, then you become no, created. unbeliever. Uh, let me ask you, was Quran there from the beginning with the God? It just said it's uncreated. Was the speech of Allah there from the beginning or not? No, no, no. Was the speech of Allah there from the beginning or not? Let's yeah, say, yeah, say yeah, of yeah, the, yeah, it was that. Yeah. It was that. Yeah, yeah. Let's say, say let of the Quran. Let the Quran. Sir, let's say, say of the argument. There was a time and place. Allah created Quran. Yeah. Okay. And this is the Quran. Yeah. Allah gives His attributes for all loving, all present, and all powerful yeah. is the attributes of Allah. And Allah is giving those attributes to Quran. Is Allah committing shirk, or Muslims are committing shirk and denying the others? That's a question. 
anything. No, Allah never so, said that the Quran was there from the beginning. Why you you said, you said no, no. there was a time and it? place no, that the Quran now, has been created. Do you believe created. or do you think that Quran was with the God from the beginning? My answer to you, no. Okay. But there was a moment of time so, where Quran was, was, was what's created. What's your name? But, but it says here it's uncreated. Yeah. Huh? So, it says as read it's uncreated. Let, uncreated as read it. As read it to the creed. As read the creed. Sake of the argument, Article let's say Quran is created as you state. But you will have lots of Muslims who would disagree with you, okay? Sake of the argument. What says the Quran? Quran doesn't say it is created. But sake of the argument. Sake of the argument. Take off the argument, Quran is created, and that created being on the day of judgment going to have, going to have the attributes of Allah, all knowing, all powerful, all present. So there are shirk going on over there. Allah is only all knowing, Allah is only all present, Allah is only all yeah. But yeah. on the day of resurrection, according to you, since you believe Quran is created, yeah. this created Quran yeah. is going to have the qualities of Allah. Okay. Therefore, no. there is shirk going okay. on. My friend, so... Yeah. So, it's very clear what we're saying to my, my friend, my Muslim friend here. If I claim to have the abilities only God has. If I claim to be all powerful, or if I claim to have, um, to be all knowing, or I claim that I'm all present, attributes that belong to God only, then what I'm essentially doing is, is blasphemous. What um, Muslims will say is, is shirk, because there's only one God. But yet the Quran, or Allah gives these attributes to the Quran, but yet, they're saying that the Quran is not God and this is not shirk. Now, Maybe make sense Quran of that. Maybe we have two, two persons of the, of the, of the yeah, two, being, two beings of the... Here's the yeah. thing. Throughout Christian scripture, Bible teaches, with the word of God, heavens are made. Yeah. And throughout scripture, Bible teaches, we must obey the voice of the word of God. And that word of God took up human flesh, come and dwelt among us. That word of God came and nailed on the cross for the sin of mankind. And that word of God tells us it is him who gives eternal life. Amen. Allah is not going to bother for you. Yes. Eternal word of Allah, Quran is not going to bother for you, yeah. but the eternal word of Yahweh, yes. whom all heavens have been created, yes. to whom we must obey the voice of him. Yes. He is the one who offers eternal life to mankind by the blood of his blood of blood of him yeah. which is shared on the cross for the mankind Amen. so quran is not gonna help you but it is the eternal word of god lord jesus christ alpha and omega Amen. who is offering you eternal life yes. with his blood on the cross hallelujah hallelujah and it's through the blood of christ that we can be reconciled, reunited, that we can become friends of God. Because the Bible says that we are transgressors, that we sin or iniquity has separated us from God. But we need Jesus Christ. We need the eternal word of God. We need the word of God to, re to bring us back to him so that we can not only have a relationship here on earth, but eternally forever. So we encourage those who have never got to know Jesus Christ to come unto Jesus. He is, as my sister said, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and he is the author and finisher of our faith. And today, we encourage you and we invite you to know Jesus. God bless. Yes, amen.